In this video, you're going to learn about array lists. We've already learned about arrays, where you have to create a variable that has a specific number of elements. With array lists, you tell Java, I want something that's going to have a bunch of elements, but give them to me one at a time. I'm not going to tell you how many I need. If I need 20, I'll ask you 20 times. If I need 50, I'll ask you 50 times. So let's see how we use array lists and how they differ from arrays. So an array list in Java is a collection that works like an array. But it's got some improvements and some restrictions. Array lists only work with objects, not primitives. Remember, we could have an array of ints. I can't have an array list of ints. I can only have an array list of objects. However, Java has built-in classes called wrapper classes, like integer with a capital I or double with a capital D, that work just like the primitive int or double. Now, some benefits. Array lists allow you to grow or shrink your array dynamically. You don't have to decide at the time you write your program, I'm going to have a thousand of these, or I'm going to have ten of these. You can say, I'm going to have however many I'm going to have. And the array list provides some methods that make it fairly easy to manipulate. Let's see what they are. So here's some language features of array lists. I've put a lot of things on this one page. You may want to refer back to it several times. Remember that a copy of this PowerPoint is located on the bottom right hand side of the page for lesson four. So you can bring it up at any time without having to look at the video again. So if I want to create something, let's say I want to create a recipe list that's going to have more than one element that are objects of the class recipe. I would say array list and then using these angle brackets the name of the class that all the objects in the array list are going to be part of. So I'd say array list recipe or array list string or array list checking account. So array list angle brackets recipe recipe list says Java give me a variable called recipe list. It's going to be an array list and the array list is going to have zero or more elements, each of which are type recipe. Now, I still can't use recipe list until I create it with the new keyword. So here I go. Here's where I instantiate it. Recipe list equals new array list of recipes. And then open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Because I'm going to the constructor, remember those from last lesson, for the class array list. I didn't have to write the constructor. Java did that for me. And the array list constructor doesn't take any parameters. But I have to say new array list of recipes, parentheses. Or I could combine these two statements in one statement. Array list recipe, recipe list, equals new array list of recipes with parentheses. Now, whether I did that first set or this second set, I can then say create a new recipe. This isn't in an array or an array list. Just create a recipe called R, which is a new recipe. Once I've created R, I can add it to my list. If I do recipe list.add, what does it want? It wants whatever was in the angle brackets. An array list of recipes, then what I pass in better be a recipe. An array list of strings, what I pass in better be a string. An array list of integers, what I pass in it better be an integer. So this adds object R to the next spot in the list. How do I refer to an object? With arrays I used square bracket and then the element number 0, 1, 2, 3. With arrays I can do something similar but I use the name of my array list dot get and pass in a number 0, 1, 2, 3 Array lists start with index 0, just like arrays did. Everything in Java starts with 0. So I can say, hey, recipe list. I know you've got recipes in you. Get me the one in slot 2. OK, not slot 0, not slot zero, 1, but slot 2. Return that to the variable r. I can find out how many elements I've got in my array list by saying, hey, recipe list dot size. 
So the array list class must have a method called size that returns the number of elements. Notice I don't do dot length like I do with an array. I do dot size parenthesis. And here's something that you can't do with an array, but you can easily do with an array list. Recipe list, remove the one at position i. It removes the object in position i, shifts all the rest of them up. So if I removed item 7, item 8 would move up, item 9 would move up, item 10 would move up, and so on. That was hard to do with an array, easy to do with an array list. So let's see what happens in memory when I go through statements like that. Suppose I put the statement array list recipe, recipe list. What does Java do? Gives me enough room to say, here's something that's going to point to an array list. It isn't pointing to anything yet, because I haven't instantiated the object with the new keyword. But it gives me something called recipe list that could point to an array list. Now I do the statement recipe list equals new array list recipe. And what does Java do? It says, I've got element 0 of my array list, and you're going to be pointing to that. That first element, element in slot 0, is going to go right here. Now, there's nothing in it yet, because I haven't created a recipe. I've created my array list, and my array list is going to have element 0 and element 1 and element 2. Each one of those has to point to a recipe. So what do I do? Recipe list.add new recipe. When I do new recipe, that creates a recipe hooks it up to element 0 of the array list. If I do that again, recipe list add another new recipe, here's another new recipe that gets hooked up to element 1. And I can do that again. Recipe list add a new recipe, recipe 2 gets created, and element 2 points to it. So you can see there's another level of indirection in Java to give me something that's convenient to use, but I have to be very careful. I've got to create the recipes. I've got to create the array list. So how do I insert elements? Let's switch from recipes to checking accounts. Suppose I have an array list of checking accounts called accounts. I instantiate it as a new array list. And I'm going to give myself just a variable called done that's a Boolean. Remember, Booleans can either be true or false. I'll initialize it to false. So while I'm not done yet, go through this loop. Get the information to put into an account. Maybe it's a checking account like we did in our last lesson, and you need a name and an account number and a balance. Once I've got that information, I'll create a checking account. Checking account. One account equals a new checking account. Pass in whatever the constructor needs. Now that I've got one account, I add it to my array list. Then I could put in the code that says, hey, do you want another one? If so, I'm going to set my done variable to true. If you don't want another one, I'll set it to false. You probably did something like this when you implemented your game of NIM in the last lesson. So we'll go through this loop, get information, create a checking count, put it in the array list, do you still want to do more? If you do, get the information, create a checking count, put it in the array list. You still want to do more. Once you don't want to do more, you exit the loop. Now, how do I reference elements in the array list now that I've put them in? Well, if I knew exactly which element I wanted, let's say I wanted to print out the fourth account. That's the one that's in slot or position number three. Because remember, array lists like arrays always start with element 0 in Java. So I do system.out.println accounts.get number 3. I could get number 0 or number 1 or number 2. Here I'm getting number 3. Accounts.get3 is a checking account. I can print out a checking account. Now here's a loop that goes through all of the accounts. For int i equals 0, i is less than accounts.size, i++. 
printoutaccounts.getI. Just like we had loops that went through all of the elements in an array, we can go through all of the elements in an array list. I could remove elements from an array list. So let's say I want to delete the second account, that is the account in position 1. I could say accounts.remove1. What will happen? Whatever used to be in slot 1 is gone. Whatever used to be in slot 2 moves up to slot 1. Whatever used to be in slot 3 moves into slot 2, and so on. Or, here's a loop that goes through all of the accounts and removes any of them with a balance below $100. Now, I've got a thought question for you here. Instead of going through this loop from number 0 to the size, I'm going to start with the biggest value and make i get smaller each time through the loop. So if I've got 10 elements in my array list, I want to start with number 9, then do number 8, number 7, number 6, and finish up with number 0. Now, why would I be doing that? Pause the video, think about it and then restart the video and I'll give you the answer. Ready? Go ahead and pause it. Okay, I hope you actually did pause it. Think about it. Why am I going down? Well, suppose I were going up and I wanted to get rid of the one in position 3. I go i equals 0, i less than the dot size, i plus plus. Once I get rid of the one in position 3, then the size changes. This way, I know I'm always going to end at zero. So a little bit safer that I'm, I know I'm going to process all of my elements this way. So what am I going to do here? Let's say I'm going to create a variable called CA. It's a checking account. That's going to be whatever the ith value is. And then I'm going to say, hey, CA get your balance. If you're less than 100, you're out of there. If you're not less than 100, you can stay. Now there's a new type of for loop that I'm going to introduce in this lesson. We've already used a for loop by taking an int and incrementing it each time through the loop. Very useful for us, especially with arrays and array lists. But we do it so often with arrays and array lists that we've got a mechanism that's called the enhanced for or it's sometimes called the for each, that lets us iterate through either an array or an array list without keeping track of what number we're on. So let's see how that works. Here's an example using arrays. So I've got an array of ints called numarray that uh, say has 50 slots in it. Assume we've got some code here that fills up the array. Now instead of going for int i equals 0, i less than numarray.length, I plus plus, I say, for int one num colon num array. Or you can read that as, for each one num in num array. Each time through the loop, one num is going to get the value of num array zero, or num array one, or num array 17. Each time through, one num is going to have a different value. So inside the loop, the variable one num is bound to the element of the array. It takes the place of using numarray sub i in a regular for loop. So if I wanted to print out the square of the value of that element, I'd print out one num times one num. Notice I don't have to say numarray square bracket anymore. That's taken care of for me by this enhanced for loop. I can do that with arrays. I can do it with array lists also. Similar example. Suppose I've got an array list of integers called num list numList equals a new array list of integers. Assume there's code here that fills numList. Now I'm going to go through a loop for each one num in numList. Inside the loop I can use one num, which would be the same thing as if I had said numList.getI. Instead it's put in the variable called one num. So if I want to print out two less than the value, I just simply do system.out.println one num minus 2.